Middlesex and Gloucestershire drew their latest LV County Championship match at Uxbridge after Chris Rogers' 148 meant that the home side avoided the follow-on on the final morning to effectively save the game. They resumed on the last morning on 283 for 7 and that meant that they needed 27 more runs to avoid that follow-on. And that was by no means a certainty when Tim Murta was out to the ninth ball of the day, leg before to John Lewis. With just two wickets in hand, Middlesex was still 25 runs short of their target, but Rogers kept his cool to save the game. He begun the day on 125 and advanced carefully until his side had reached a total of 310, at which point there would not be enough time for Gloucestershire to force a result. The former Gloucestershire player Anthony Ireland was a man who took his side across the line with a four off Jack Taylor after 50 minutes of play. Rogers then waited for the declaration which never came. Instead, Ireland smacked Taylor for a six as he moved on to 16. And Rogers gave David Payne his first wicket when he was bowled on the walk for a superb 148, his highest score for Middlesex. When Ireland followed in the same over, Middlesex had been dismissed for 325. So with just two and a half sessions left, Gloucestershire came out to bat for a second time, 134 runs ahead. And only with runs coming as quickly as they'd done in that record-smashing day of T20 cricket between these two sides last Sunday at this ground, would they be able to set a target for Middlesex to chase. That, of course, never happened. Hamish Marshall got a leading edge to a ball from Murta, who clung on to a low return catch. Chris Dent edged the same bowler behind in Murta's next over. And Chris Taylor gave Murta his 40th LV County Championship wicket of the summer when he was led before as Gloucestershire went to lunch on 57 for three from 11 entertaining overs. First inning centurion Ian Cobain was then bowled by Stephen Crook on the resumption as Gloucestershire slipped to 65 for four. Kane Williamson and Richard Coftry then fashioned a partnership which ensured that Middlesex couldn't remarkably find a way back into this game. They were able to add 94 runs for the fifth wicket as the match headed for the inevitable draw. An exquisite cover drive took Williamson to his third 50-plus score of the season. This one had come off 64 deliveries in an hour and a half. It was a good knock from the 20-year-old, who is a very young man to be skippering the side in the absence of the injured Alex Gidman. He eased his way to 73 with his ninth boundary. He was out when he chipped a ball from Tom Smith so slowly into the air that John Simpson had time to move from behind the stumps to complete his 42nd dismissal of the championship summer. Coftry, under no real pressure, played his most fluent innings of the season to date in making 40 from 73 balls, this one of his five fours. But he was foxed by Crook in the same over. Expecting another short ball, he went back and was bowled by a delivery which did keep low. Jack Taylor used this opportunity to get some valuable time in the middle and gain some first team experience and he played a couple of blistering shots too to take Gloucestershire to 197 for six at T, the game long since over as a contest. Taylor did make 29, his highest first class score to date in his sixth innings. He was the seventh man out, top edging a slog sweep off Smith, which was held by Murta. John Lewis couldn't repeat his first innings heroics and was caught in the gully by Sam Robson. A nice moment for Ireland, who's remained good friends with Lewis since leaving Bristol for London. Of course, this match was supposed to be about Andrew Strauss getting some batting practice ahead of the Indian Test Series. In the end, he spent as long bowling as the game petered out. Scott Newman and Robson were also given an over apiece as the match ended with Gloucestershire on 229 for eight, a game ruined by the thunderstorm on the second morning. Neither side will be overly happy with a draw, which means that they couldn't take advantage of Northamptonshire's defeat at Essex. Third place Gloucestershire did close a gap on second place Middlesex by three points, though. They got 11 to the home side's eight, and there are now only four points between the two, although Middlesex do have a game in hand.